Welcome to sections 3.4 and 3.5. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what I want to talk about is percent composition. And the idea behind percent composition is you want to see what percentage of your total compound is a certain element. So to give you an analogy, let's go back to building a bike. So if we built a bike, we have various parts that were put together to form our bike. The handlebars, the seat, the wheels, the frame, whatnot. And let's say you wanted to go ahead and assess the weight contribution of each one of the parts of your bike. So what you would do is you would take the weight of each one of those components and divide it by the total weight of your bike. That way you can go ahead and decide if you want to change one part or the other or see where the bulk of the weight is coming from in your bicycle. Let's go ahead and do a similar calculation using a chemical compound. So let's start out with table sugar. Table sugar is C12H22O11. So the first thing I want to do with percent composition is I want to go ahead and calculate the formula weight. So what I have here are 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. I look on the periodic table, carbon weighs 12 AMU, hydrogen about 1, and then oxygen about 16. So I'm going to times the amount that I have to the atomic weight that I find on the periodic table. I get those numbers and then I can go ahead and sum it to get the formula weight of table sugar. So once I get the total weight, what I can do is say how much of that weight is due to carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen. Now the way to do that is I'm going to go ahead and take the number of atoms of that particular element the atomic weight of that element divided by the total formula weight. So again, 342 is going to go on the bottom. I had 12 carbons, and each one of those carbons weighs 12 atomic mass units. I'm going to times it by 100%, and what I see is that 42% of it is made out of carbon. I can do the same with hydrogen. In this case, I have 22 hydrogens, each weighing one atomic mass unit, and again, the bottom is going to be the same, that formula weight of table sugar. If I do this calculation, I see that hydrogen makes up about 6% of this chemical compound. Now, what you guys will note is that if you add up all the percent compositions, you should get 100%. So even if I didn't calculate oxygen like the other two, what I could have done was just take 100 minus 42.1, and minus 6.4, and I should have got somewhere close to the 51.5. With that said, let's go ahead and practice some problems out. Why don't you guys go ahead and calculate the percentage of nitrogen in calcium nitrate? And once you guys are done, go ahead and mark the right answer. All right, gentle people, the first thing I can do is write down each element inside this chemical formula. So in this case, I have a calcium, I have nitrogen, and I have oxygen in this chemical formula. I can then look on the periodic table and see how much each one of these elements weigh. Calcium weighs about 40.8, nitrogen 14.01, and oxygen 16.00. Then I can go ahead and times it by the amount of each one of these elements that I have. So there's only one calcium, nitrogen, there's one nitrogen in my polyatomic, but there's two polyatomics, so this is going to be two nitrogens. For oxygen, there are three oxygens in my polyatomic, but I have two polyatomics, so a total of six oxygen. I can do my multiplication out, and then finally I can go ahead and add this all up, and I get the formula weight for calcium nitrate. Now, what I was interested in is I was interested in nitrogen. So nitrogen, what I can see, the total contribution of nitrogen is 28.02. I'm going to divide it by the total formula weight, and I'm going to times this by 100%. And what I get is around 17.07% nitrogen content. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and do one more practice question. So same deal as before, go ahead and read the question, and then after you guys are done doing the question, go ahead and choose the right answer. 
All right, general people, what we're going to do is we're going to do a whole bunch of dimensional analysis. And that means we're going to cross out units to get where we want to go. So remember what our ultimate goal is. I want the number of carbon atoms. So we're going to start out with 0 0.350 moles of our carbohydrate. And in this chemical compound, what I'll note is that for every one of my chemical compound, I will have six carbon. So an easy way to represent that is you can write six moles of carbon over one mole of C6H12O6. Now, I don't want moles, I want atoms. So what I will note is that one mole of carbon is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. So we can go ahead and cross things out. Mole of my chemical compound cancels out with mole of my chemical compound. Mole of carbon cancels out with mole of carbon. And so all I'm left with is atoms of carbon. And if we do this calculation out, I get 1.26 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. Well, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem 1A.